about once a week during a live stream or something, somebody asks me if I'm gonna be checking out the Genki Shadowcast. I'm not entirely convinced that that's not just the same guy on different accounts. I've never seen so much hype around a capture card before. It's as if people don't even know what a capture card is. But this is the Genki Shadowcast. It's made by a company that got their start making Bluetooth dongles for the Nintendo Switch and docks. And you know how I feel about docks. And they know how I feel about aftermarket docks. And I don't know what to talk about. I've never died in Mario Maker 2 before in my life. Everybody knows that. Anyway, I want to give this thing a fair shake because I give everything a fair shake. The Genki Shadowcast is marketed as a device that allows you to play your consoles on your laptop or PC with the added benefit of live streaming or recording your gameplay footage easily. There are a lot of bold claims here and a lot of weird decisions and somehow $2 million in crowdfunding. This is a really strange story about an unremarkable device garnering a remarkable amount of attention. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Have you heard this? That two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? That's unless you're in my family, then that number jumps up to three out of three guys. Every single man in my family is bald. Better start that off, because this is what you're gonna expect. It's called keeps. <laughs> you better keep on keeping because this is what's next. Yeah, I've been holding on to this hair for dear life. That's why I never get haircuts, because I feel like I'm just never gonna see it again. So yes, I use keeps now, and I've been using this sort of medication for over three years now. With keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online, so you don't even have to see anybody. They'll recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you and your treatment will be shipped directly to your door every three months. Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss, which makes it more affordable. If you're ready to do something about it and prevent that inevitable hair loss, go to keeps.com slash wolfden or just click the link in the description below and you'll get 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-E-E-E. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash wolfden, spelled like that. And thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video, but more importantly, keeping my hair on my head. If only there was something like you around 30 years ago for my dad. Why don't you cut your hair short? Get used to looking like this. What else? <laughs> These shipped a while ago, and I thought I was being stiffed because I didn't get mine yet. Do you guys hate me that much? Then I realized it was just sitting in our P.O. box, and I made a huge mistake. I'd like to think that I have a decent amount of experience with capture cards and similar products. What I think was the most surprising about this whole thing was the general public's reaction to the Kickstarter campaign. I think what people latched onto was the fact that you can use this to play your Nintendo Switch games on your computer, and it'll even show up as a webcam, so you can use it to broadcast your gameplay to close friends or even to your boss in a Zoom meeting if you're bold enough. This isn't a new concept though. Elgato makes a whole line of capture cards and even a cam link that is very similar to the Genki Shadowcast. I guess Elgato just markets their products towards streamers and gaming professionals and Genki is marketing it more towards the general public. It would be pretty cool to be able to play my Nintendo Switch games on my laptop. Why not? I think the biggest difference between the Elgato and the Genki Shadowcast is that the Shadowcast is only $50. And actually, it's already on a Prime Day sale at just $40. So the price difference is definitely one huge positive over the competition. The Elgato Cam Link is currently $100, so around twice the retail value as the Genki Shadowcast. This might also be a good time to mention that I have done a sponsored video for Elgato before. I don't think that changes anything. I purchased all but one of Elgato's products with my own money. And there are other companies like Avermedia. I haven't used their products in a while. Elgato is kind of like the industry standard right now. That's why it's so easy to compare capture cards to their products. I'm pretty sure this thing was designed around being able to sit comfortably inside of a Nintendo Switch dock. It's tiny form factor is designed well for that. Having a male HDMI connector sticking out of it is a little weird for most other use cases. 
I did purchase an HDMI coupler just in case I ever wanted to use this with anything else, like a camera or something. It is an HDMI 2.0 device. That means it can read a 4K signal coming out of a console or camera like a PlayStation 5. It'll just downscale that to 1080p, 30 frames per second for the capture software. It comes with a decently long USB-C to USB-C cable. I appreciate that it's right angled on one side. More cables in this world should be right angled on one side. My version did not come with a USB-C to USB-A adapter because I got the base Kickstarter campaign. But I was able to just use the USB cable that came with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and it worked just fine. Even though it has a USB-C port on here, it's actually just read by a computer as a USB 2.0 device. I guess that's some sort of cost cutting measure. Setting this bad boy up was remarkably easy. You literally just have to plug it into your PC and your computer will automatically detect it as a webcam. From there, it's easy to get it to work in OBS or Zoom or whatever, but Genki recommends you use their own app for the best performance and minimal latency. They don't tell you how to download the Genki Arcade app, but luckily it's a quick Google search away. The app is very bare bones. You really only have the choice between favor performance or favor resolution and volume controls. If you're capturing footage for a video, you should probably go with favor resolution. If you plan on playing any sort of game that requires fast reflexes, you'd probably want favor performance. Neither of these look particularly great. It should be noted that the Genki Shadowcast caps at 1080p 30 frames per second, which shouldn't really be a problem, but the bit rate seems low for even that. Everything's like a little muddy. Interestingly, the Mac version of this app has more options. There's microphone, for I guess commentary and stuff, and you can choose where to save the files to, the video files. You can also take screenshots and stuff. Also, uh, the latency is noticeable, which kind of ruins the whole pitch for this thing. But that should have been expected. Most capture cards on the market have an HDMI pass-through so that you can connect the capture card to a computer and still have the HDMI passing through to a monitor so that you don't lose any latency. This way, the video processing can happen off to the side and not get in the way of your gameplay. Elgato's products also claim to have such low latency that you can just plug it into a computer and play directly off of your computer screen. And I know people who stream playing games like that, but I've tried it and I would absolutely never want to play games like that. You can probably get away with playing Animal Crossing or Pokemon or any turn-based game like this, but something like Smash Brothers or Mario Maker or anything that requires reaction time is going to be a little more difficult. I could be getting into the technical details about the latency and stuff, but EPOSVox already has a fantastic video that gets really into the technical details about the latency and, and all of the tech specs of the Genki Shadowcast. So I recommend if you're into that stuff, you should definitely check out that video. He also said that for whatever reason, the Genki Arcade app actually seems to have more latency in his testing than using the Shadowcast through regular old OBS, which is interesting, but it doesn't matter. I would never want to use either of those. All I can tell you is that the latency is noticeable when I plug it in and I play it. I go, oh, no thank you. <laughs> to Genki's defense, the Genki Shadowcast is a lot cheaper than all of the other capture cards that I use professionally on a daily basis. I already mentioned the Elgato Cam Link before. This thing is double the price of the Genki Shadowcast, but it has USB 3.0 and it does up to 4K video. If you were starting a live stream and you were to ask me what sort of capture card you should get, I would recommend the Elgato HD60S because it has an HDMI pass-through so that you don't have to worry about latency at all. You can just plug it right into a monitor and play your game as you normally would. But this thing is around $200. So it's four times the price of a Genki Shadowcast. So that's really the biggest selling point here, is that this thing is cheap. It's not some revolution in the capture card market, it's just a capture card that's marketed well. 
there are cheap capture cards out there that are pretty similar to the Genki Shadowcast. I just don't have any on me, but Epos Box does, because that's like kind of like his whole shtick. Elgato calls their latency tech instant game view, which is a big reason why I was skeptical of the Genki Shadowcast in the first place, because if a big corporation like Corsair, who owns Elgato, couldn't get the latency down to a point where it would be comfortable for me to play, what makes you think Genki would? I mean, that would be some revolution in technology that no other company has, only they developed it. And that would kind of be worth the $2 million in funding that they gathered up. But in order to use Instant Game View with an Elgato product, it needs to be plugged into a USB 3.0 port on your computer. But that just begs the question, if the Shadowcast has a USB-C port, then why is it a USB 2.0 device? Is, is it to cut costs? I'd imagine it would be much faster and able to do much higher resolutions if it was a 3.0 device. But that's not even a problem at all for me. I don't care that this thing can't do 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's not a big deal. It's, it's the latency. And I think being a USB 3.0 device might have been able to help that a little bit. I'd be curious to know why exactly they, they did this. But again, if it was to cut costs, that is the biggest selling point for this thing right now. Again, I am comparing this thing to other devices that are more expensive, and that does seem a little bit unfair, but there's a reason why they're more expensive. You wouldn't give a Toyota Camry a fresh coat of paint and then send it off into the NASCAR expecting it to perform well. You know what I mean? You have to pay a premium if you want to have a seamless experience. So if you just want to be able to play your games on your laptop or desktop and you're not that sensitive to video latency or video quality, this is a fine solution. Maybe you want to get an Animal Crossing YouTube channel or Twitch stream up and running and all you have is a MacBook and 50 bucks to spend. Or you just want to pull a trick on your family during your next Zoom meeting. I can conjure up a few use cases for this thing, but if you are ever gonna play any fighting games or competitive shooters or any game that you think you're good at, Mario Maker I've never died once, twitch.tv slash wolfden, maybe it might be worth it to save your money and go with some of the more expensive options. I don't know, maybe I'm jaded. Maybe there is room for a consumer level capture card that I'm just not seeing. Or maybe that's just what the share button is for. Anyway, what do you guys think about the Genki Shadowcast? Are you excited that it's finally out? Are you excited that all of the reviews are out now and you get to finally see all the hubbub about it? Did you get one yourself? And is there a use case for you that I'm missing? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. I can't stress enough that the, the latency seems to be uh, worse to some people than it is to others. It, it's something you gotta kind of be sensitive towards, but if, if if you do play any games competitively, you will probably notice it. Also, everything we talked about here, I got Amazon affiliate links in the description below, including for the Genki Shadowcast, because I, I put affiliate links for everything that I talk about, no matter what it is. Genki gave me because they thought I didn't like their doc because I got affiliate money from Bastop. No, I get it from Amazon. I could get, I could do whatever, I could sell any product I want. Also, you sell your your own product. <laughs> of course, you're gonna be biased towards your own product. Anyway, thank you for making it this far in this video. Of course, it helps us out tremendously if you're subscribed. Make sure you're subscribed and not just relying on YouTube to show you these videos. If you wanna see every single video we post at least once a week, make sure you click that bell and you actually click on those notifications when they show up. And you could also share this video with a friend, a friend who might be interested in this, maybe a friend that you do Zoom meetings or video Discord calls with, or maybe a friend who's looking into live streaming and doesn't want to spend a lot of money. Thank you guys for being here very much. Have yourself a very good week.